This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Hello. With inflation and ripple effects of the pandemic, there is still a lot of uncertainty about our economy. But today, a huge rebound for the Bay Area. Well, Uber is offloading some San Francisco office space it never moved into in the first place, according to CoStar News. The ride hailing giant is hoping to sublease one of the four Mission Bay buildings that make up its headquarters. So that makes up about a third of its footprint in the area. San Francisco's office vacancy rates were at 26% in March. It is a record high. Undocumented students are close to being able to work on campus jobs at any of the 10 universities' California campuses, and that is thanks to a new policy adopted by the university's Board of Regents. So, this comes after months of student organizing, urging the university to change its policy. The board has appointed a group to come up with a strategy on how to best do that by the end of November. Well, Bay Area School going above and beyond to help a growing number of migrant families arriving in their community. Our Jose Martinez spoke with one student who overcame enormous challenges just to get here and is now stepping up to help others. It was definitely an emotional day here at Escuela Popular, one of the many institutions in San Jose experiencing a sudden influx of immigrant students. We actually spent some time with one of them who just crossed the border four years ago when he was only 17 years old. He says it was a tough journey, but the image of his grandmother kept him alive. Leiser Garcia left his home in Guatemala in search of a better life for his family almost four years ago. I have to cross the whole country of Mexico uh, by my, myself because I, my family wa part of my family was in Guatemala and part of my family is here. He was 17 when he started this journey, running away from gang members who wanted to force him to join them. One time I cried because I remember my grandma and I cried when I, I was thinking, oh, what if I die here? What, I don't wanna, I don't, I'm not going to see my family again. What if I die here? And that, that will be my life. But he made it here to San Jose. He is now 21 and a full-time student at Escuela Popular, one of the many institutions in San Jose experiencing a sudden influx of immigrant students. We definitely have unaccompanied minors that have showed up to our door, so we want to make sure that we provide them with a loving, caring environment that we can both support them in every which way. That consists of food, clothing, bare necessities, um, mental health services, legal services. Karen Martinez, community relations advocate at Escuela Popular, tells me that the school is preparing for an even larger influx of new students after Title 42 expired last week. So we currently have 500 students on a wait list. We are currently working to make calls, and we call each and every one of them individually um, to work to meet their needs. We find out, you know, where what they've gone through, what they're going through, what their needs are, and then we help to support them in learning English. Um, we also have also our high school where they can also get a high school diploma, and we help them in transitions of higher education. And Santa Clara County and the city of San Jose are also working on a welcoming migrant response plan that would activate different departments to help incoming migrant families. Well, the green hills and the wildflower blooms around the Bay Area are quite something to look at. And for many of us, something to sneeze at. Allergy season, back with a vengeance after those record setting winter rains. People we caught up with at Lime Ridge Open Space in Concord say they're definitely feeling the extra pollen in the air, but it didn't stop them from enjoying the outdoors. It seems like it's just all of a sudden hit really hard, so definitely see a lot of pollen, whether it's the colds that people are having kind of lingering or just allergies. I feel like everyone's just a little congested all the time. I am dying this season, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, this walk was hard, but it's yeah. really pretty out. Doctors are expecting a longer and heavier pollen season this year, and the concern is not just outdoors. Not only do we predict that the tree pollen and the grass pollen will be longer and um, possibly heavier, but also that mold um, might follow that as well when we start to warm up more, um, just because of you know the humidity and also we worry about indoor mold as well with that, um, just given that a lot of folks have had their homes flood, um, and so we worry about mold from that indoor humidity building up as well.
All right, so what can you do? What can we all do? There are, of course, the over the counter pills, nasal sprays, and eye drops. For longer term treatment, you can talk to your doctor about getting an allergy shot. You can also minimize pollen in your home by showering when you get home and keeping your windows closed and investing in an air purifier. Also, uh, pets carry some of that dander too, a right? And the, the pollens. Yeah, correct? Get those little disposable wipes. You don't have to yeah. get a bath every day. My dogs would hate right. that if you did but that. Wipe but, them off, right? Yeah, just give them a little wipe off okay. and a little bit under the belly because it kind of collects the grass pollen yes. there and it helps get that stuff from getting into your nose. But if we did talk about a pollen count, I mean, are we exceptionally high? Is that why we're no, seeing we're more? No, we're past the peak of pollen season, All right. but there's still plenty of that stuff in the atmosphere. Yeah. Let's take a look at the pollen count as we head into the weekend. We're going to be technically in the medium high category on Saturday. Excuse me, the medium category Saturday, then the medium high category for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Now, that's a little bit misleading. We have these five different categories that we put the pollen count into. We're really going to be straddling that dividing line between medium and medium high for the next several days. It's grass, olive, and oak pollen as the top three, but juniper pollen and walnut tree pollen also present in the atmosphere in abundance, just not quite enough to crack the top three. The Bay Area Children's Theater has officially closed the curtain for the last time. The closure comes just three weeks after the Berkeley-based theater announced an emergency fundraising campaign to try and stay open, meaning all performances, classes, and camps are now canceled. A major road closure is about to begin in Sonoma County. Caltrans is closing 11 miles of Highway 37. The shutdown starts early tomorrow morning and goes through Sunday morning. Crews will be repairing a railroad crossing on the highway there. All right, I want to thank you so much for watching. The news continues streaming on CBS News Bay Area. We're going to see you back here at 11 o'clock. Have a wonderful and safe weekend. Thanks for watching.